Hi there. My name is Ann Crowdcamp, and in just a few minutes here, I'm going to try to understand what I'm doing for you. Um, maybe it's not that easy to pick up on, so I have a script, and if I sound like a teacher, I'm really not a teacher, I'm more of a sharer. So um, hopefully I can do this um, in a way that is spontaneous, even though I'm reading. <laughs> okay. My name is Ann Cryocamp. I'm a double Sagittarian, and I'm nearly 77 years old. Between my naming as a newborn and now, that's almost 80 decades, or excuse me, eight decades, <laughs> I have amassed an enormous collection of memories, which I'd love to share with you on a weekly Chromecast. Why do I call it that? Why Chromecast? Because that's what I am, a crone, deep into the third stage of being a woman, as outlined in the ancient triple goddess, maiden, mother, crone. Furthermore, I'm a crone who's been pretty much wide awake and processing my experiences since I was 26 years old, when I heard while hospitalized with generalized peritonitis, and really by the doctor told me that there was nothing more they could do for me, I heard in a booming male voice that filled the room, live or die, it's your choice. That was my first experience of, clair of what's known as clairaudience. Um, and it uh, was also a, as you can imagine, a major turning point in my life because obviously I decided to live. And from that moment on, I took responsibility for my life rather than think of myself as a victim. When I say that I've been awake, I mean that since then, and with the aid of Gurdjieff's technique of self-remembering, and I will talk about that as we go, I've been cultivating a witness consciousness, aiming to get and remain aware and centered no matter what is going on. Now that's been almost 50 or five decades of trying to be aware. And I would say at this point, there are times when I actually do manage to stay awake for minutes, even hours at a time. But that's how long it takes to, to cultivate. Uh, and I'm in no way means am I done. In 1972, I received my doctorate in philosophy from Boston University after a rollicking six-year ride through the academic world, which I will detail later on. I taught for one year at New College of California, 1972-73, an experimental college, from which I was then fired as too experimental. Lots of stories there, too. That firing ignited my study of astrology which within three years had launched me as a consulting and teaching astrologer with a local, regional, and national clientele. Basically, I had found myself by that time, and here I was in my mid-30s. Throughout my life, I've launched new magazines. Uh, the first one, actually, was one that was in New College itself. It was called um, The Nutria. That's a little animal that runs out and then scurries back and hides. <laughs> And we did this in-house publication that became very um, controversial, shall I, shall I say, because we didn't insist on editing anything. We decided we'd just use whatever came in as it was and assume that the students would start to um, correct each other, which they did. But the other teachers were not impressed. So that was the first one. That was 1972-73. The second one was Open Space, a community magazine for my hometown in Twin Falls, Idaho. Did that from 1978 to 80, opening up the town to alternative viewpoints beyond organized religion. Another one was Heartland, a regional publication to link peace activists in Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho uh, from 1983 to 85. And in this time, I had to come to the awareness that I was a violent peace activist and that was that stopped the publication of that magazine when I recognized that I in fact was the problem so again many stories there and the the final one is I don't know if it's the final one but the one I did last was Crone Chronicles a journal of conscious aging that began in 1989 and did not complete itself until 2001 
An outgrowth of Crone Chronicles, the annual Crone's Council, began in 1993 and continues even now after 28 years. It's wonderful. Um, next year it'll be in Portland if anybody's interested. During our five-day Crone's Councils, we devote our mornings to storytelling. Whoever has a story that's just swelling inside them, she climbs to the stage and in three to five minutes speaks to something from her life that has heart and meaning. This Chromecast might be called an outgrowth of Crone's Council in that in my storytelling, I cast spells of meaning through time and space. Utilizing my own experiences, coupled with the language of astrology to help structure experience and by identifying cycles of various lengths, I aim to show how when we learn to observe and then to close cycles consciously, we also thereby discover, create their meaning. In this manner, I aim to share and to teach a multidimensional way of processing experience through time establishing continuity from what too often appear to be disconnected bits and pieces in this fractured era that has split us all apart, frazzled our brains, and closed down our hearts. I will be offering extemporaneous stories as videos, plus audio readings of various essays and books. Eventually, I will also be interviewing others. You can find me at exopermaculture.com, where I've posted almost daily since 2001. I'm also the founder and a resident at Greenacres Permaculture Village, greenacresvillage.org, in Bloomington, Indiana. Let me close with a quote from my favorite philosopher, Ludwig Wittgenstein, who said, it's hard to go back to the beginning and not go further back. After all, when does a story really start? Because that's going to determine what the meaning is that we give to it eventually. Thanks.